Okay, so now what I want to do is actually edit this motion capture data. So first thing I want to do is I don't need all this information that came from the original mocap file. So I'm literally just going to go into the outliner and I should just be able to select these four elements here and simply just go delete. Okay, uh, and as I said in the previous tutorial, um, we've got everything that we need there. Okay, right. So now in order to edit this data, what I need is I, I need this blue dude to have a um, control rig. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Um, uh, so I'm going to go. We don't have any. I don't think we have our mocap character anymore, or it's kind of in the scene, but it's not connected to anything. So we can just ignore that. Let's go back to our blue dude. I need this character to have a control rig. So if I go into this sort of twirl down here and select control rig and what the control rig does in human IK is it allows us to then actually manipulate this motion okay I can manipulate it without the control rig but it's really going to be clumsy it's going to be a lot of work and um, this control rig gives me a whole kind of inverse kinematic system so it makes it a lot easier for me to actually edit the motion so um, so I go control rig I give it a moment it builds a control rig and what you'll see is well our animation has disappeared and what's actually happened here is that the animation that is on the bones of this character now um, isn't actually on the control rig okay so we need to put this animation onto the control rig so let's go back to uh, the bone system so we just go back to non okay so this is the animation that's on the bone system and what I can do is I can go right I can go on the Vitruvian man and go bake to control rig okay so we're now going to bake all of this motion that we put onto the skeleton onto the control rig okay now if I wanted to I could just bake the motion capture the the, the motion on the motion capture character straight onto the control rig as well okay uh, that's another way of doing it you could argue that that might be a cleaner way of doing it because I'm not kind of transposing the data you know I'm not putting it onto a joint system and then putting it onto a control rig um, uh, and that might feel like a neater way of doing it uh, but you can do that as well okay you don't have to put it onto the character's joints and then put it onto the control rig you can go directly from the motion capture data onto the character's mo uh, control rig as well if you want to okay we're nearly there great if we give it a moment right so now we have a control rig with our animation on it. Excellent. Okay. And I'm really happy with this. Okay. Um, okay. So it might be that what we want to do is uh, um, one of the things to think about at this point is the fact that the character we we captured this motion at 120 frames per second um and it might be uh it could be problematic down our pipeline if we keep working at 120 frames per second uh, so this is something to think about it might be it might be at this point that you actually you know if you're trying to integrate this animation into a scene that's at a different um uh, that's got a different animation rate you might want to sort of adjust your um, playback speed to, 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 to compensate. So at this point you could if you wanted to down res to say 24 frames per second so that when you're, uh, uh, so that when you're exporting the motion um, uh, uh, it, it'll integrate or whatever the frame rate you're working with so it'll integrate better with whatever production you're working on. Okay, so what might we want to edit? Okay, so I'm looking at this character and I'm sort of thinking, okay, as we, I'm uh, just going to get rid of the outline here. Uh, uh, you'll see that the arm kind of intersects with the body here. The person capturing this motion was a slightly different build, it's a bit thinner. Uh, and you'll see that you can see the arm just kind of intersects with the body. And that doesn't look very good for us from a, from a, a motion, uh, it doesn't look, make the motion look very good. And we might want to clean that up, okay? So let's imagine that we want to clean that up. Now, one of the problems that we have when we're working with motion data is that every single frame inside of our motion data is a keyframe. 
Okay, so if I just start directly editing this, all I'm doing is editing a single frame. Okay, every frame around it is going to be unedited. So what I need to do is I need to kind of basically what I need to do is take all the uh, all, all this. Um, what I want to do is take all this these keyframes here, and rather than edit these keyframes, what I want what I really want to do is actually kind of create another layer of animation to kind of uh, to kind of warp, to kind of allow me to kind of warp the data that's already there. Okay, so what do we need to do then? So what we want to do is I don't. So essentially, I don't want to animate this directly. In fact, if I go to the, um, let me just select an arm here for you. I'll just demonstrate here. If I go into Windows uh, Animation Graph Editor, uh, so you can see in here. The, the, the data is really, really dense. You can see in here that every, there's a keyframe, every frame here. Does that make sense? And all I'll be doing is just editing individual keyframes. And what I want to do is edit the whole motion. I want to edit whole areas of the motion rather than the individual keyframes. Okay. So the way that we can do that is we can use something called animation layers. So if you go to your channel box, there's a little tab here that you may not have used called animation. Okay. And what we can do is we can create an animation layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the joint that I want to edit. I'm going to move that joint in 3D space. So I'm going to translate that joint. So what I want to do is just set the IK blend for this to um, 100 or, or 1. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to set that to 1 and you'll see that there. I'm not going to rotate it. Um, I'm, just going to, I'm just going to move it in 3D space. So I'm going to set that to 1. And with that selected, I can go to my channel box and I can go, right, because this, this is what I want to edit. Okay, I can go to my channel box and I can click on this icon here, which is basically create an animation layer with the selected, uh, with, with whatever's selected. In this case, this arm joint here. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so this is my animation layer here. I want to make sure that I've got my animation layer selected so that I'm actually editing in that animation layer. Okay, and now what I want to do is basically, sorry, it's my computer. Uh, I want to just simply go into here and uh, find where I think the, the, the motion's good. It's not intersecting. And um, so I've got this joint selected or the um, I'm actually I haven't got the joint selected. I've got the in the IK handle uh, for this joint selected. So with the IK hand and it's the IK handle that I'm animating. OK, uh, so with that handle selected, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go right click and I go key selected. So one thing is going to I'm going to key it where the motion's good. Okay, and um, so that means I'm I'm it just means that I'm not editing the entire motion. Um, it just means I'm editing it where I've got a problem with the motion. So then you can see it's intersecting, and then it comes back out of here. And at this point, the motion's good again. So I'm just going to go right click and go key selected. So I've keyed it where the motion's good. Now, what I want to do is just get it at, at the worst point. So I think if I grab this point here where it's pretty bad, in fact, I might just grab this point. So I want to look for the worst point here. And then I'm just going to use the move handle. So click on my move handle, move that across, okay, out of the body, okay, and then just go key selected again, okay. So now you'll see that it's no longer it's still slightly intersecting the body there. So I might just add another keyframe here. Uh, again, key selected. You can see I'm just going to. So it's no longer intersecting that. Um, what I'm kind of finding as well is at this point. So again, I'm just finding that at this point. What I might want to do is move this across again. I don't want to do it for the whole animation because it's just going to warp the, the hand position for the whole animation. I just want to affect the animation in certain places. So I think I just go back into where it's clean here. So I'm going to select this point here and just go key selected. OK, and so it's working here still kind of intersecting at this point. So it's kind of clean at this point, still intersecting at this point. So again, I might just go uh, uh, key selected and just move that joint out a little bit. Let's have a look. So there we go. There we go. 
And what I might do as well is at this point where it's reaching out again, it's kind of intersecting it. I might just kind of push that back in a little bit and move that out a little bit as well. Uh, do I need to go key selected? Key selected. I think it's automatically putting keyframes in for me anyway. Uh, I might even come back to that key, this key here, and just move that out there. Okay. In fact, I don't think I keyed that, so let's just try that again. Move that out. Key selected. Let's have a look. Yeah. So you can see this has worked reasonably well to kind of clean up that motion. Again, just key selected. Great. I could go further, but I'm happy with that. So you can see how he's done a bit of cleanup there. And if there's any bits of cleanup on the motion, like jitters in the motion or anything like that, we could also use this approach to do that as well. Um, or if it's just like single frames that are out, again, you could just edit, you could actually just edit the raw motion capture data rather than having to add a layer to it. Great. Okay. So now that we've done that, what we actually want to do is bake that layer back onto our animation. Okay, so that's kind of a two step process that we need to do to do that. Select both of these layers and we go right click and we go merge layers. Okay, so we want to merge this back down. Once we're happy with this animation, we want to merge it back down. It might be for the purposes of um, being able to kind of um, access uh, this animation again, you might want to save before you do this, uh, so that if you kind of find you need to come back and edit that, you can do that. Uh, that's fine. Um, so I'm just going to, you can see it's kind of going through this process and it's merging it for us. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to let it do that. Okay. So we've merged, we've merged the motion back to, uh, so we've merged these layers back again, okay? And it's useful to do that because then it allows me, then I can then go and refine another bit. So I, what I tend to do is kind of refine uh, a little bits at a time, merge them back down, uh, rather than try and have lots and lots of layers because then it can come a bit unmanageable and you're more likely to make mistakes. So I tend to find, unless I really need to be able to come back and redo bits of animation, I will just continually do this sort of merge process that I've still got a, a, I've got a, a single piece of animation that I'm, I'm, I'm I've got a clean bit of animation that I'm working with just makes it a bit more manageable now I'm going to go to the human IK system and what we'll find here is that what we've done is that merge has been baked on the inverse kinematic handle okay so what that means is um uh, uh, or it's been merged, or oh, that's, I'm going to start again. That motion was animated on the IK handle for this wrist here. So what that means is, if I just get to a point where it's kind of dirty and it's merging in, here we go, right. Yeah, something like that. If I click on this handle here and just turn down the blend T here, okay, you'll see that, hang on, you'll see that the, it's going back to its old position. Okay, so... Uh, so what that means is, is, is that this hasn't, this motion, even though we've merged this animation, this motion hasn't actually been baked onto the control rig yet. Okay. So what we want to do is in order to be able to work with this animation, we need to kind of bake this back onto the control rig. So again, this is a process I do. I merge the, merge the animation back in. Uh, I merge the layer animation layers and then I go bake to control rig. Okay. And you, you kind of find yourself going bake to control rig a lot. So you go bake to control rig. So what that's doing is it's burning what we've done with the IK handles. Okay. Onto the actual, the inverse kinematic handles onto the forward kinematic joints of the control rig. Okay. So what that means now is if I turn this, if I go back to where we were, okay, you'll see that all that motion now, if I turn this, if I move this, there is a slight move, just like a slight discrepancy, but you'll see that it doesn't move it anymore. Okay. All of that data is effectively burnt onto the forward kinematic controls of this rig. Okay. Um, what that means now then is if, if I save this data and I want to bring this data back onto this character and I've got the kind of default 
setup here where none of these um, uh, T and R blends have been switched on, my animation will work because it's been burnt onto the actual forward kinematic uh, 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 parts of the control rig. Um, it's not stored on the inverse kinematic parts. So it's kind of this process of merging merging animation layers and baking back onto the control rig. And I do that for each bit of the animation process. Okay. And then obviously what we can do now is if we wanted to, uh, so if I want to take this motion and put it into a game engine or something, so um, which isn't going to have this control rig, it just, you know, a game engine is just going to want the raw joint data, then obviously I can just go in here now and go bake and just bake it to the skeleton, export the skeleton, uh, just export the, the, the character with the joints uh, as an FBX file. And this will, and that edit will now be uh, uh, in, in that file. So I can then put that into a games engine or something that doesn't recognize this, um, uh, uh, this control um, rig, which is obviously something that is uh, particular to uh, Motion Builder and uh, Maya. Okay.